New Vegas, despite being a nearly 12 year old game, is filled to the brim with all sorts of different weapons, more so than even some modern games. Over the past year I've even made videos highlighting some of these weapons such as golf clubs and straight razors, but today I thought we would switch things up a bit and take a look at an absolutely devastating weapon as today I aim to find out, can you beat Fallout New Vegas with only binoculars? Starting things off I come up with an appropriate name before getting to the easiest part of the run as I need to decide on my special stats for the rest of the challenge. Given that I'll be doing a lot of staring at people from long distances, I thought it was only right that I maxed out my Kagger's perception just to make sure that he got the most out of his primary weapon this run. Tag skills were just whatever I thought might prove useful. Medicine and barter are always good to have as they work well with each other. There was a temptation to pick up speech as well, but I didn't want to make the run too easy by relying on it as my crutch, so I opted to take repair instead. Honestly, I'm not even sure if the binoculars can get damaged, but better safe than sorry I suppose. Finally for traits I picked Claustrophobic. If there was ever going to be a video where this made the most sense, this was probably going to be it. After I get my Pit boy from Doc Mitchell, the run can actually begin immediately as thanks to one of the DLC packs, you start off with a pair of binoculars already in your inventory. After leaving the safety of the Doc's house, I began testing out my weapon of choice by getting a real good look at the wrinkles that were slowly engulfing Pete's face. After getting accustomed to the binoculars, I introduced myself to Sunny Smiles so that I can get started on her little tutorial and begin the Ghost Town gunfight quest. Sadly, I don't get very far here as for whatever reason I can't knock the bottles down with the binoculars. I sat for a while trying to glare at them hard enough that I might knock them off the fence, but alas they never moved an inch. With nothing left for me to really do in Good Springs, I began walking towards Prim, all the while weighing my options of where I should go next. In the distance I spotted the Mojave outpost and figured that it wouldn't be the worst place to start moving towards, especially seeing how it's one of the only places where you can get an instant repair thanks to Major Knight's 100 repair skill. On this journey I channeled my inner David Attenborough as I used my equipment to study the habits and movements of some of the local wildlife. It seems the oversized geckos don't like being watched as it ran right over to me after only a few seconds of documenting it. Lucky for me though, they don't seem to be the most effective predators as even a Sunday stroll speed was enough to keep out of their reach. The strangest creatures my eyes did spy was a mysterious floating metal man who was just staring off into the distance. Fearing he would kill me, or much worse, crash the game if I got too close, I just decided to ignore him and finally made my way to the outpost. While I was there I went to meet with Ranger Ghost to get the easy experience for checking on the state of Nipton. For some reason though she was nowhere to be found, but in her place I was able to get a unique variation of the binoculars known as the binocular satellite. I of course needed to test them out to see how much better they were than my current binoculars, so I offered to help Jackson clear out the ants and made my way down to just see what this new pair could do. Ok, so they are certainly a little bit more effective than the ones Doc Mitchell gave me. They come with a couple of notable drawbacks however. First off, as you can probably imagine, they cannot be used indoors for obvious reasons. Secondly, I can't just point and shoot anywhere and have the bombardment take place. I specifically need to hit a person with the laser sight and then wait a few seconds for the strike to begin. Finally, the biggest issue they present me with, the bombardment can randomly cause the game to crash at any given moment. More so than usual. But to be fair, that's a small price to pay for the ability to always have a pocket carpet bomb on me. It clearly works well on insects, but I had to be certain it was just as effective on humans, so I made my way to Nipton where I would have the perfect amount of test subjects to familiarise myself with the weapon. First off was Oliver Swanick and after marking him for termination, I noticed that the laser causes whoever it hits to become hostile as if you'd actually hit them with something. Thankfully with Oliver here I can just holster my weapon and he calms down momentarily before getting absolutely eviscerated by bombs. The Legion in the town prove a little more complicated to take out. Marking them has them rush me and the missile strike hits the area where they were initially marked and it doesn't follow them. With that in mind, stealth is going to very quickly become an important skill this run. For the time being though I can get around this by using the crucified powder gangers and marking them along with the Legion so they will rush straight into a different strike and be killed. After his men have littered the streets, Volpace finally exits the town hall, but he is not angry at me as none of the kills with the bombardment are actually counted as my own and are instead marked as environment kills, so my reputation with the Legion also remains neutral. 
It's here where I realize I can use the bodies of nearby NPCs as mark points as well, which makes us a lot easier as I can use one of the dead legionnaires and all the while Volpice is clueless as to what's about to happen. After this I headed for Sloan, as this is one of the few times where it is more than viable for me to just head north straight to Vegas, as the Death Claws sure as hell won't be stopping me. Turns out positioning myself on a nearby ridge where they cannot reach me leads to the very quick extinction of the Death Claws in and around the quarry. Wondering where to head next, I quickly decided on Red Rock Canyon to deal with the cans, as they are thankfully all mostly outdoors people. I also realised I would need to side with Yes Man, as I will have no reliable way to take out the Brotherhood of Steel outside of using the key cards, but that wasn't something I wanted to do this time around. That said, rather than head straight there, I figured I would need some experience and levels, seeing how I'm not getting any despite the trail of bodies I've left in my wake. The closest and probably easiest quest I can think of is taking out the three major fiends for the NCR, so why go and do that very quickly. I start with Driver Pth, who I honestly thought may have been the most annoying given his tendency to rush the player with his golf club. Luckily, him and his men were all grouped up inside the nearby ruins, so one bombing run was able to take them all out. For a brief moment, I thought the missiles actually destroyed the buildings, but it turned out it was just the effect of the missiles impacting the ground messing up a bit. Despite the multitude of explosions he was hit with, Nefi's body is honestly not in the worst condition. I thought about picking up the bloody mess perk to really see this in full effect, but considering how much slowdown and crashing has already occurred without throwing bits of people into the mix, I figured it would be best not to get it this time around. Violet's dogs resting on the roof of her shack made her an easy target as she was right underneath them and as such did not survive for very long. Finally was Cook Cook and much like Violet before him, I used his prized animals as the initial target of the airstrike. In a shocking twist, even after multiple strikes by way of the Brahmins, Cook Cook somehow survived with very little to no injuries. It's not a huge setback as once I spotted he was still breathing, I just rapidly marked him with admittedly far too many airstrikes to be certain his luck would not hold out for a second time. My back was turned when he died, but I did turn around in time to get a good shot of exactly just how many missiles were honed in on him. After finding the body and grabbing the last head for my collection, I made my way for Red Rock, only stopping to ruin the day of a family of bighorners. Of course, getting rid of the cans in the longhouse is not an option, so I had to make do with whoever was outside at the time. I was able to rain death on all the ones in the valley by simply standing up on the ridge and picking random targets who seemed just far enough away that they wouldn't be able to spot me. So taking out the cans was simple, that said, from their destruction I learned a valuable lesson. See, after the cans were no more I made up my mind that I would be heading to Camp McCarran, so logically I fast travelled back to where I atomized Cook Cook as it was the closest point to the base. But when I fast travelled there, this happened. So it seems to be whenever I re-enter an area I've been to before, be it by fast travel or just walking back into that part of the map's loading zone, the explosions of any previous bombardments all seem to happen at once. What this meant was that any time I attempted to fast travel to an old location, I would either die or the combination of multiple explosions would cause the game to crash. The only workaround I could find for this was to not fast travel, so the run's length just got artificially longer. It's not a huge deal for now as it's only a short jog from the canyon to Camp McCarran anyway. Once there I got my rewards, levelled up, dumped everything into sneak and then boarded the monorail where I am very sure I was followed by a long line of NCR guards. Arriving at the strip and I went to see Mr House first for absolutely no reason. Like seriously I just walked up to him and had the usual conversation that you can always skip and then just walked over to the tops anyway. Speaking of, since I have skipped all the initial story quests of tracking Benny up to this point, upon seeing him I am hit with an absurd amount of experience which levels me up enough to get my sneak up to 78. Having the skill this high is incredibly important right now as I need to steal the key off of Benny and meet up with Yes Man now. This is because I lack the speech skill to convince Swank to make Benny stay and as mentioned before I cannot use the binoculars missile strike indoors so therefore I cannot fight off Benny's bodyguards should I be led to the presidential suite. Or at least I thought this was the only way to proceed. After conversing with Yes Man I made my way back down to the casino anyway and spoke with Benny and agreed to meet up in the presidential suite. Turns out though, you can just do a 180 when you enter and walk straight back out with zero consequences and Benny will have already left to go to the fort. If I am siding with Yes Man, I will need to head to the fort and activate the Securitrons for a change as I require Caesar to hand the Platinum chip over to me. Before leaving the strip though, I get ahead of the curve by meeting with the White Gloves and the Omertas. The real joke of this run is the fact that there is no way for me to kill the Omertas and that makes me very sad. 
With Mr. House being the only person I needed to come back and talk with on this strip after I get the platinum chip, I figured that I could just hit up the Boomers and Brotherhood now before heading to the fort, as then I could just return to Yes Man once all of my tasks were complete. George, the viciously evil man who gets his sick kicks by having people run to their deaths by way of explosive ordnance, finally has his karma catch up with him as I let the sky rain down upon him, all the while making sure to get a good view from a safe distance. Attempting to keep with the trend of ironic deaths, I also try my hardest to wipe out the boomers as well, but due to the missile strike having a slow startup time, along with most of its leaders remaining indoors 24 7 it seems, I never really had the opportunity to do anything all that destructive. At the very least, when I was on my way to meet with the Brotherhood of Steel, I could show some of the nearby powder gangers the true meaning of boom. As mentioned before, my options for interacting with the Brotherhood of Steel are rather limited, given their intention to hide underground. This means I purposely got kidnapped by them and agreed to do all their dirty work by getting rid of Dobson. The sneak skill came in fairly useful here as he was never able to figure out where I was and as such got promptly juggled by missiles until he died like he was fighting a Sector player. I then reported my misdeed back to the Brotherhood who were less than pleased at my incredibly violent ways. That said, they still let me come and go freely from the base. Not that I would ever be coming back as now with the last of the major factions encountered, it was time to head for the fort. I am going to be brutally honest, the walk to the cove was incredibly boring and uneventful, literally nothing of worth happened. So, as a way to circumvent that boredom a bit, I made my way to the Boulder City Memorial to meet an old friend. Just because I know everyone will ask, yes, you can indeed trigger Kowalski if you point the laser at the memorial, even though it will not fire any missiles on it. That said, just marking the monument and having him chase me didn't seem like the best use of my time. No, instead I blew up a nearby merchant and his brahmin so I could then use said merchant as a beacon for the single biggest ordnance strike of this run, which surprisingly did not crash the game. I feel it's better to just show this than talk about it, but you've been warned, you may want to turn your volume down. After nearly nuking the world for a second time in this universe, I spent a while looking for the remains of Kowalski, because as you can probably imagine, he got blasted rather far from his starting position. When I did find him, he was lucky enough to only be missing one of his legs and his life. With that little excursion out of the way, I find myself at Cottonwood Cove, and by extension, the fort. I then proceed to finally get the platinum chip and head my way down to the bunker to do house's bidding, but not really, this is all for me and the emoji on wheels. Once more on the ground, I just dart to the end of the facility as fast as I can to install the upgrades to the Securitrons, as it's not like I can defend myself indoors. Seeing how Caesar confiscated my weapons, I'm also without a way to kill Benny, so I just leave him to the Legion as I make my way back to the Strip. Remember how I said less than two sentences ago that I have no way to defend myself indoors? Well, turns out that was not entirely true after all. I figured this out when I easily stormed Mr. House's pod and started marking him over and over again. Turns out the laser itself does a minuscule amount of damage, so I can use it to very, very slowly whittle House down until he dies. All that leaves is to install Yes Man, watch the presentation, obliterate the Dorado substation, and then make my way to the final battle of Hoover Dam. I figured this would be the best possible place to really get some use out of the binoculars, and I was right. Too right it seems. A vast majority of the fight across the dam was just shaky cam and white screen, with the ever deafening sounds of multiple explosives raining down all around me. I was able to make things a little more manageable by making my way up to the sniper towers, but it wasn't too much of a difference. Also, I don't know why some of the writing is in Spanish, as my settings are set to the Queen's English, so it must have something to do with the mod. The interior segments of Hoover Dam are about what you would expect, just me running as fast as I can between rooms pushing buttons all the while trying not to be murdered by Legion and NCR alike. Entering the Legate's camp and I can quite easily take out the first Praetorian by getting far too close to the blast radius due to him sticking close to me with his melee weapons. It was integral to my plan that I took him out first away from the others as once he went down I could wear his clothes, making the rest of the Legion unaware of my true intentions as I then used his body to safely mark targets without bringing the entirety of the camp down upon me. I even used him to take out the Legate by throwing him just close enough to him while I remained out of his dialogue range. I then called down far more strikes than I really needed, but I feel it's better to be safe than sorry when dealing with Lanius. When the blinding light disappeared, Lanius was nowhere to be found. 
Thankfully, the waypoint was still fixed on him, so I followed that to the top of one of the nearby tents, where he landed. I then took his helmet for good measure, and got ready to meet Oliver. Out of morbid curiosity, I tried prematurely having strikes come down in the hopes that it may kill the general as he came in through the gate. But all that ended up happening was me going out in a blaze of glory, as I too would need to be dangerously close to the strike as well. So I just decided to do things the old fashioned way and attack them after the conversation had ended. I fired far too many yet again, but unfortunately Yes Man and the boys took out the general and his men before my missiles even got a chance to come down. The ensuing bombardment did seem to knock Yes Man somewhere, as once my eyes began to work, he wasn't waiting for me at the gate, and I was able to go out and get a pretty good look at the army in the background. They of course aren't really secure Tron, so I can't hit them with missiles, so I just turned around, found and spoke with Yes Man, finishing the game, and proving yes, you can indeed beat Fallout New Vegas with only binoculars. It should probably go without saying, but yes, this was an April Fool's video, as a normal binoculars playthrough would just be another pacifist run. If you are at all curious and wish to test out the mod, there's a link to it in the description below. Regardless, that's going to be the next challenge video. If you enjoyed what you saw, consider giving a video a like, and interested in more challenges in the future, feel free to subscribe. So I want this video every week. My name is Blair, it's nice everyone, I'll see you all in the next video.